Hi, everyone. I'm Isabel Marquis. I'm a food marketing and communication specialist and close collaborator of the Canadian Food Innovation Network. And here today with Nestor Gomez. <laughs> so, Nestor, I, you're the uh, Chief Technology Officer at CFIN. Uh, yes, yeah. And thanks for joining me this morning to talk about this, um, I would say, very intricate and interesting topic, uh, which is algorithms. And um, it's it's you'll probably agree with me. It's a it's a word that we hear more and more. Is it really new? I don't think so. From well, I'm, not, I'm not an expert. You're the expert. But can you tell us in a in a few seconds briefly? What the heck are algorithms? <laughs> what what is this all about? So thanks for the question. So that's, that's an excellent question. Uh, the algorithms are essentially a set of instructions. Uh, they have uh, to be considered an algorithm. These instructions have to have a well-defined stop criteria or, or end criteria. Uh, they, they usually have some input conditions in the form of data. And uh, these instructions usually compute or uh, calculate or uh, obtain a result with that data. This last point of result is important because uh, that's what makes the difference between an algorithms and any random uh, set of instructions, right? Uh, I can give you some examples. Uh, I don't know, 2 plus 2 equals 4 is the most simple uh, example of an algorithm. Uh, or, for example, finding the uh, common denominator between two fractions or uh, calculating the average consumption of uh, annual consumption of, of your heat pump uh, per year or uh, the recipe of a cake. It's also an algorithm. Uh, your inputs are the, the uh, ingredients for the cake and the instructions uh, is the algorithm and the output is the cake. It's very interesting because from what I knew of algorithms, it sounded like very technical, very sophisticated uh, and uh, complicated, I would say. But <laughs> <laughs> now I understand it. It's uh, it, it can be quite, quite simple, not to say very simple. Uh, but uh, more recently, every time I hear about algorithms, it's mostly related to a bunch of new technologies, for example, blockchains or artificial intelligence or robotics, machine learning, etc. Uh, what's the link between algorithms and all those new technologies? Well, uh, for algorithms to become uh, practical for us, uh, in the modern world, they are encapsulated in electronic devices. So the way we tell these electronic devices how to run these algorithms is through programming languages. Uh, so we write scripts. They are also called uh, computer programs uh, using these programming languages. And uh, these are sequences of letters and numbers that we call instructions. And, uh, these electronic devices can interpret this in instruction and generate electronic signals, which then in turn move a needle in a dial or uh, store a piece of data in a memory chip or turn on the motor of a conveyor line or increase the temperature of an oven or send an email. Uh, that's how algorithms materialize around those. Now to your question, for example, artificial intelligence. Uh, these are a specific class of algorithms or computer programs that mimic or resemble uh, human intelligent behavior. Uh, they are more sophisticated than traditional algorithms and they're complex, but they're still algorithms and they process thousands, sometimes millions of input signals. And they, uh, they can react to the variability of the environment and they're capable of solving complex problems that that are traditionally only humans can solve, right? Machine learning, uh, that's considered part of uh, artificial intelligence. Okay. And these algorithms work by learning from samples of data. Uh, they fine tune themselves and they can respond through a process known as training. Uh, once these algorithms are fine tuned, 
They can be used to make predictions, uh, make decisions that were not explicitly defined by a human programmer. I see. Uh, and, and if we tried it now to bring this into the food world, so since our, our members and colleagues who are listening to that, uh, to that interview are, I guess, mostly from the food sector, um, the food industry and production and manufacturing in, in, in general is very complex and the, the presence and the expertise and, and knowledge and all the skills that humans have are can be hard to mimic or replicate completely and precisely uh, artificially. Uh, are there some sectors uh, of the food industry uh, or some specific tasks uh, for which algorithms are particularly uh, useful or promising? Yeah, well, as I said before, they are all over around us. We don't even know that algorithms are working for us. In the food and beverage, for example, uh, algorithms help to plan the demand of raw materials. Uh, they, they help us to predict consumer trends or crop yields or predict the quality of uh, frozen uh, products in a, in a production line based on the grading of the raw material, uh, the, the conditions of the uh, production line. Um, algorithms alert of possible hazardous conditions in a production line that could generate a safety incident. Uh, they can help us schedule a delivery uh, of a production batch. Uh, uh, you mentioned before, for example, blockchains. Uh, mm -hmm. These are specific solutions designed to store data in a distributed network uh, using cryptography, among other things. Uh, so blockchains are used, for example, for traceability of raw materials in, in food production, uh, for uh, inspections, uh, for quality purposes, for auditing purposes as well. Right. I don't know if I give you that perspective. So, so besides all the, you know, calculation and planning organization and all that that we can think of, I, I can see a, a huge potential uh, for um, reducing waste, for example, or reducing all the, the costs or extra costs that uh, can happen throughout the production line if we miss a step somewhere, or if there's something that doesn't work as it will predict it or help you predict it, if I understand well. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, waste reduction is one of those key, uh, you know, performance indicators of any uh, uh, food manufacturing company. Uh, the way we reduce waste using algorithms is by optimizing how much of the raw material we utilize. And mm -hmm. part of that is using, for example, computer vision systems that Again, artificial intelligence is behind these systems. It can recognize defects and remove only the defect, defective part of raw materials instead of throwing away entire batches of um, apples or potatoes or whatever, and therefore uh, reducing the, the, the waste that we generate in, in food manufacturing. Awesome. Now, let's say I want to explore this further. Where do I start? Who should I talk to uh, to explore all the possibilities uh, for my business? So I would say if, if you're absolutely new and not very technically savvy in these matters and you want to uh, go through a digital transformation in your business, know more about algorithms or um, in general about technology, approach uh, your university, uh, regional university approach, for example, NGEN, uh, the super cluster for uh, manufacturing uh, approach, CIFIN, uh, <laughs> and uh, they all have subject matter experts that are very, very knowledgeable in these fields and that can guide you through the initial steps on, on a digital transformation process for free, essentially. Awesome. Uh, Nestor, thank you very much for guiding us through that uh, fascinating world of technology. Uh, and we'll Pleasure. be in touch soon for uh, another interview. Thank you so much.
Thank you, Isabel. Have a great weekend. You too.